Hey guys, how's it going? Techfits here. Today, we're going to be doing something a little different. In today's video, we're going to be comparing two of the most widely used browsers in the world, Apple's Safari browser and Google's Chrome browser. With both of them offering their own variety of features, it can be difficult to choose between them, and I personally find myself switching a lot between them often. So in this video, I'm going to be going through all the pros and cons of each browser, using a scoring system that gives each browser a point for when they do something better. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the design of each browser, as it's one of them things that can either make the browser or break the browser. Safari has a relatively minimal design, which is fine for most people. There are all the essential icons and a search bar in the top row, and there's just a plain start page with all your favourite bookmarks. Chrome has also got a simple design by default, but it definitely looks more modern in comparison to Safari, due to the curvy Google aesthetic that they put on it in comparison to Apple putting a more straighter and boxy one on Safari. Things like tabs and other options are where you would expect them in Chrome, but in Safari, tabs don't show up unless you've opened multiple of them, which can be confusing. And another thing that you could be confused by in Safari are where to find the settings, because they're in the top left in preferences, and if you've never really used a Mac before, you probably don't know where they are. So for design, that's one point to Chrome. But at the end of the day, it's down to personal preference, so don't take this as a Chrome is better necessarily. Whilst we're on the topic of design, let's talk about customizability. It's no doubt that Chrome being made by Google and Safari being made by Apple means that Chrome gets the advantage when it comes to customization. Chrome, of course, offers a wide range of different themes, both first party and third party, from the Chrome Web Store. Safari, on the other hand, does a typical Apple and gives you little to no customization unless you count light dark theme from your device's settings as something, but yeah, of course, Safari has no customization to it. So if you're into changing the background of your browser, changing the colors, changing everything like that, definitely Chrome is for you. And again, Chrome wins another point. And again, whilst we're talking about the Chrome Web Store, let's talk about browser extensions. Chrome again has the upper hand as many third-party developers are willing to develop plugins for Chrome, as Chrome has a large user base from Windows, Macs, everything. And uh, let's just say Safari has limiting options. On Chrome, the setup of any browser extension is as simple as going to the Chrome Web Store, finding one that you like, and clicking Add to Chrome. And you might have any other additional setup from whatever plugin it is, but in general, you only have to do three steps. On Safari, it's not that simple. You have to find an app for the browser extension, either in the App Store or wherever else you would find it. And then you have to download it, set the app up, and then add it to Safari by going into Safari's preferences and then to the extension section. And then you have to turn it on, which that's definitely more than five steps. It's very clunky. So for browser extensions, Chrome wins again. <laughs> but enough with all the how does it look or how can you change it to your preference? Let's actually talk about how they perform. Now it's not like everyone who uses Chrome knows that Chrome takes up a lot of memory, like a lot of RAM. It, it's well known that if you have a low spec computer and try to use more than like three Chrome tabs, the fan will start going like an aeroplane. Or a PlayStation. Yeah. After looking into it, the average person uses about 8 to 10 tabs on their browser when they're doing anything from intense research to just regular use. So I went and opened 10 tabs on each browser and went and saw how much RAM they were using. The tabs that I opened include a YouTube video playing in the highest resolution possible, a Word Online document, the Apple website, a news article, a standard just Google search tab because people like to do them a lot. A game of Able Pool on Miniclip, Pinterest, which has loads of images on it, Twitter, Reddit, and just an empty tab for luck, which, if you've counted, that amounts to 10. All of these things are things that you would probably have either open or in the background, especially if you're one of them people that leaves all their tabs open. At around five tabs, Chrome started to struggle with everything loading really slowly, and uh, after around seven tabs, everything just started to be slow in general on the Mac. 
When I counted up how much RAM was being used in Activity Monitor, Chrome was taking up around 2.5 gigabytes of my max 8 gigabytes of RAM, all with just 10 tabs. On the other hand, Safari excelled at this and it opened every tab with just normal speed, probably due to Apple's optimization of Safari with macOS. And according to Activity Monitor, Safari was only taking up around 2 gigabytes instead of Chrome's 2.5. But the more noticeable difference with Safari was just performance and general load time, as well as just how well the OS was being used. Chrome made the Mac slow down way more than Safari. And that finally brings Safari one point, so the score is now 3-1. Another thing that is important for a browser is syncing between devices. It's always so handy when you can go and search something on your desktop and then go on your phone later on and go and find that article that you are reading so you can send it to your friend or something along those lines. Both browsers offer syncing, but Chrome has one key advantage. On Chrome, syncing works between every type of device, be that Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, Linux, and anything else that can have Chrome installed on it and have your Gmail account logged in. Whereas, um, of course, Safari works through Apple's iCloud and only syncs between Apple's devices because Apple doesn't let Safari be on Windows or Android or anything. So if you're someone with an iPhone and loads of other Apple devices too, then uh, Safari is fine for you. But if you have like an Android phone and a MacBook, uh, Windows computer and everything just different, then Chrome is probably your best bet when it comes to syncing. Purely just because of the cross-platform support, Chrome wins this round, so it's now 4-1. The final thing that you need in a browser is, of course, privacy. Now, Google is, of course, notorious for sucking up user data wherever they can to be used in personalized ad recommendations. And although they say that everything is like secure and stuff, you can literally go to your profile and see everything you've ever done with your Google account. They know literally everything about you. Now I'm not saying Apple doesn't track you at all because obviously they use Google as their standard search engine for Safari. But Safari has privacy ingrained into it with all tracking turned off by default. Whereas on Chrome it's turned on and you have to go and manually turn it off when you realize, oh no, Chrome's been tracking me this whole time. Another privacy thing with Chrome is that it's obviously more susceptible to being targeted by hackers because obviously Chrome is used on way more devices than Safari is, but I wouldn't worry too much about it. It's just one of them slight small things that you obviously have to watch out for. Definitely for privacy, Safari ends up pointing here, so now it's 4-2. And now let's get onto some smaller features that just make each of them that slight bit better. On Chrome, there is support for 4K video playback, but on Safari, strangely, there isn't, even though all the newer iMacs support 4K, which I don't know why, but to watch YouTube in 4K, you have to use Chrome, so Chrome wins there. Chrome also has a handy media playback icon that shows you what audio is playing or what music is playing through your browser, and you can obviously skip forward, go back, and everything like that, and it's just one of them handy things that you can have. Chrome also has offline website support, so say you're on the go, you can save a website offline and then go off and then read that article whilst outside or something like that. Another thing Chrome has is that it's updated regularly, so whenever Google decides to update it, whereas of course Safari only updates when macOS, iOS or anything like that comes out. On the other hand though, Safari has many other handy features such as Reader View, which means you don't really need to use an ad block to simplify your page. There's also a reading list so you can save stuff for later and there's many other handy features which I have already mentioned in my previous video with 20 macOS tips and tricks that you can use to save you time which is somewhere up here I think. But for small features, Chrome obviously has more handier ones and they get them more often, so that's another point for Chrome. And this brings us to the end of the video. Now of course both browsers are great and they do their job, which is obviously ultimately to search up stuff. But of course Chrome has more features, whereas Safari is more optimised. And that's down to 
your choice of which one you prefer to use. Personally, I use Chrome most of the time because of the features and I like features, but make sure to drop a comment down below saying which one you personally use and whether you are willing to trade off performance for features or you rather have a faster browser with less features. And that's basically my comparison. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it and a subscribe would be greatly appreciated as it supports the channel. And also thank you everyone for 50 subscribers, 50 people, although it doesn't seem a lot, if you visualize 50 people in front of you, it's still quite a fair amount. This is Textbox here, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.